Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another interview video. Uh, this time we got a cool special thing. Uh, you you might have uh, seen her over on the Ruler School podcast this week. And so we have the owners owner of Games and Geek here, uh, Svetlana, uh, here to talk about various topics. <laughs> That's my dog freaks out. Um, but uh, I figured we sort of go over some of the stuff maybe that uh, she had talked about on the podcast as well as obviously talking about the upcoming Minnesota Grand Prix, um, which I'm sure everyone's looking forward to. Um, and yeah, so for people who don't know, if you want to introduce yourself and sort of what you do. Hi, um, so my name is Svetlana Young and I own Games and Geek. It's a gaming store in Minnesota. And We've just been known in forcible community for running the larger tournaments, and we're also doing this as our second Grand Prix this year for the forcible. And of course, it's going to be awesome event. Invite everybody <laughs> to come. We are always known for giving out the cash, so three thousand this time. Yeah. Yeah. No, the, the the first GP you guys ran was uh, I was really sad that I missed that because that looked like a lot of fun. That was uh, one of the first events of the year, I believe. Uh, so you you sort of started it and are in a sense kind of near the end. Not I don't think closing. I think we still got a couple, but pretty much the big opening and closing because you're also the last uh, paid invite, which uh, you technically didn't even have originally. You basically. Um, because you were a cash event, you sort of converted that cash into a paid invite, which I thought was a really neat idea. Um, and so we're able to still have that battle it out for, for that last invite of the season. Exactly. I mean, ideally, I mean, originally, the first idea was to have kind of two paid invites. That's when this company doing their paid invite grand prix. So we were going to do more cash towards the second and and things get changed, so we did a different layout. Now, yes, we do have fifteen hundred dollars cash for the first place. We and should cover the ticket and the hotel. Yeah. Um, and you guys got a lot of, uh, and, and you're also sort of known for having a lot of unique pricing in addition to the cash pricing. So, uh, I, you did some announcements, I think, this past week or so. So, what what is some of that pricing that people can look forward to? Well, I can show here. So we did um, uh, Forcible Malaysia. It's a Malaysian distributor and they make unique tokens. Like if you guys see their super cool, awesome GBR tokens and we got in touch with them and they made us Games and Geek exclusive. So there is only limited amount of those made and it's only our art cannot be reprinted. And I can show it here on the screen. So we hmm. made the little red. We made. Uh, we also did a pool to see which one was the fan favorite. That's why we chose those. This is the Buddhist Zero and uh, Lumia. <laughs> and they just recently add. So we used to do those, and they just recently add a line that you can do a plate. So there is only twenty of those plates made, and you have. That's awesome. But yeah, in the back, actually, very textured. It's very cool looking, and I uh, have. The zero and the red. <laughs> so. Those are super cool. Yeah, I've, yeah. Actually, Lumi has been fun favorite so far. Oh, I, I would have thought zero would be, but <laughs> so did I. We actually like as a coins, we made more zeros. We made um hundred as tokens. Mm. We made hundred zeros and sixty Lumias and sixty red. And right now, most of the people go for Lumi and Red. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm sure people won't complain if they're getting zeros instead. <laughs> well, so far we have enough to cover whatever requests are. But um, so we're doing a special package this year. If you go, um, so regular entry is $35 and gets you a glint of insight. And uh, then you can get a VIP package, it's $65. It gets you two of the tokens, the coins of your choosing. And there is a VIP plus, which is 110, gets you all three coins and plate of your choosing. And additional to that, we have uh, gonna be hard to find promos. We hmm. have the English and the Japanese version and you pick which one you want. 
and obviously glint added to that too don't yeah no i that, that that was pretty tempting for me because i really want a donut drone <laughs> well if you come i will hook you up <laughs> um and uh yeah so cash price i think that's oh and the yeah the play mat like you said so it's basically especially that that was one thing i always liked um that when i used to play pokemon i always liked that i could go there and i could do the entry and get the play mat but i could pay extra and i would get a cool card or a cool little something with it uh to go and so i i was really happy seeing that because that was one thing i miss is going to an event and then leaving with stuff if you pay extra and that and so i like that uh you're sort of doing something that we don't really see in force will gps pretty much at all or events in general and so uh with exception of i think arg recently started a thing where you could do tiered uh, systems but uh so i, I was pretty excited about that <laughs> um and yeah, we were, with those we were gonna do um add them as a price pool like brace also like a breakdowns you know where you take like last our first grand prix we did in october we did a lot of like extra prize in top 16 top 32 top 50 top 100 so it was like extra 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 but then if people don't do very good and they want to drop and they want to continue to have fun and play side events they feel like they can't drop because then there's like additional pricing that gets you to play oh, yeah. and then people got more exhausted and so now this you get your prizes either way you know this is a guarantee you're walking away with a cool swag and um if you're not doing good during a tournament we have a lot of side events set up we're gonna play everything wonder we're gonna have casters we're gonna I... have uh, <laughs> yeah we're gonna have the epic storytelling yeah. <laughs> genesis everything yeah i i i heard that and, and oscar w was pretty bummed out because as of right now he won't be able to come but he he we, he heard that you're doing uh epic stories and it's valhalla legal and he got he got really excited about that um so let's see may, maybe we'll be able to squeeze something out last minute but uh <laughs> to make him come uh but i i that was another thing that i was excited about because uh, side events i i really like because i mean I mean, I try, but usually I don't do very good <laughs> in events. And so it's nice knowing that, because usually uh, you'll drop out and then you feel like, even though you're, might, maybe you're drop out because you're tired or not doing it well or whatever the reason, you drop out, but then you're like, well, I want to kind of see it through. I'm here for the event. I want to be playing stuff and there's nothing really to do, but being able to drop and be like, okay, now I can go not only play a fun game, but like, ones that especially like epic stories or cluster and stuff like that that they might not even have at their locals that they can never play they can now have an opportunity to play with other people and for prizing or whatever it might be i think is is, is really awesome there will there will be prizing and we will also run additional like first day and the second day too we will also run, run like small cash tournament so if people wanna if the people some people want to play for prizing which we will do that and we will also do like everybody enters to tournament gets promos and um if people want to have some cash you know because they came in they want to win some cash they want to recoup some money to spend so we have like eight to 16 pot people they can win some money yeah and they'll if they're anything like me if if i were to win and be like awesome and i'd probably just go over to your front counter because you guys will be selling singles and everything there right yes we will have sing vendors booths too yes yeah um uh that that was also my, probably one of my favorite parts because i had uh you guys had a booth at the uh, which gp was it um i'm going blank now uh but Collinsville, Con yeah Collinsville. and so i i was able to go over there and i traded in some cards and then got a bunch of cards uh and that's i got some uh older stuff for my epic stories deck and everything so i was pretty happy <laughs> yeah well we do have a very good selection i usually keep like now it's actually harder everybody going full art so i'm missing some full arts i used to be very uh very proud owner of everything play sets and more and now it's getting harder and harder <laughs> to pull them which is actually good it's, yeah it's actually helps the secondary market too yeah it's more stable um 
So uh, some of the move on to some of the stuff you you had talked about on the ruler school podcast. When the, one of the main things was you had said that you had met with uh, Kim. And so for people who don't know, who is Kim and like what was that sort of interaction that you had with him? So with uh, Force of Will, we, when we found out that uh, E.G. and Jeff no longer in charge. And obviously it turned everything, you know, upside down for everybody. People were afraid, what's going on, what's happening, you know, Robert stepped down. So there is like no announcements, who is the terminal. Then um, Robert told us that uh, Kim's son is going to be a new CEO. So I didn't think he would respond, but we sent him a message because we had some questions about Grand Prix and certain logistics and stuff like that. And so he responded right away and he helped us with everything we needed, like handle all the logistics, answer all the questions from also even things like TCG Meister, which is the software you need to run, like to run the tournaments and to upload your weekly tournaments to get your promos. And we weren't able to get the license because they expired and nobody could help us before. Like he handled that right away and helped us like with any and every question. And then he said that he is going to come to um, Gamma and it's a trade show in, Las in um, Reno, Nevada. And he's like, you should come and meet me. I would like to talk to you. And uh, that time we weren't planning to come to Gamma. So I was like, oh man, okay. <laughs> So I, I didn't want to lose the opportunity to be able to, to talk to him. So we actually booked a ticket, me and my husband. We flew whole entire day there. There's a two layovers. Every, every, every layover, layover was late. So, and um, we got there, we were able to talk with him for about 40 minutes. He also had to leave too that day. So he only had a certain time and so he took time from his busy schedule to talk to us. And what he said that they're still planning to have Grand Prix next year. And they're still planning to have more um, company run Grand Prix because I think they're unhappy that some stores don't run them at the rented venues, that more of them run in, in locations. So they want to be more, more official, more professional, that actually it's a rent out, you know, like holes or different venues for people to for more attendance and it's not just like oh yeah come and hang out you know show up and show up so they want to do like there's a more effort and um but we still we are grand prix minneapolis we're still gonna have two grand prix next year so i'm very excited about that so hopefully we're not again we do another one in october so we don't have that big gap between between the seasons <laughs> And, uh, and they're still concentrating in the United States because that was also concerning. Are they going to be just Japan oriented or are they still going to put attention to the United States? And they are planning to have, well, I mean, they do have a lot of attention on the United States. And they're not abandoning us. They're still sending promos. They're still figuring out how to handle all the different things. He's interested to listen of what improvements can be made. I actually sent him a whole proposal how maybe we can increase and help to run more regional tournaments in different areas and how mm -hmm. for civil company can support that. So that's also now under review with the board. Okay. D did he uh, give any indication of like, uh, like volume of GP? Is it going to be similar like number that we've seen in the past? Is it going to be more or less? Did he give any sort of indication of what they're thinking of? So. I do not, I mean, I don't want to say like, this is what's going to be for oh, yeah, sure, yeah. but I think he said number eight, eight okay. Grand Prix by, was by the company. I mean, I still trying to convince him to do maybe like some stores to run and I send him a proposal so how they can do it. But if they just do it, like rented out venues, because that will be very expensive for company to run their own Grand Prix and sending people from Japan to organize and everything. That's just like insane. <laughs> yeah. No. I mean, I think because uh, I like the like idea of um, running the company run stuff alongside a couple of the bigger stores that can handle uh, 
essentially hosting it as if it were a GP, but on, on a store run level to help even get the regions that they maybe wouldn't hit, especially like uh, like you, what you guys do and everything. I'm sure there's at least a couple other stores that would do that, but knowing that they'll continue it, especially because uh, that, that was the fear, especially after they had canceled the two only company runs, we we all just assumed there's going to be no more company run GPs going forward at minimum. So it's it's nice hearing that there at least is going to be some <laughs> next year, if not a, a a very healthy amount. Um, that's from what what he told me yeah. that they are planning to do eight. At least they're looking into but, it. Yes, and uh, and that there's still going to be some sort of the world's tournament too. Okay. Next year. I don't know if they're going to do paid. How they're going to do? How they're planning to do it? And um, but like I said, I also sent him a proposal how they can do. You know, if they want to run their Grand Prix or if they want to run by by the stores, that well, it will help the company offset the cost mm. and have more different competitive tournaments in different regions, which I think will also overall will help the game. Yeah. Yeah. That. Um, are you able to say any of the sort of ideas you had in the proposal that you sent to him, or are you, we're going to keep that under wraps for? <laughs> I mean, I don't know if they're going to approve. Yeah. So right now, it's just kind of like. This is my ideas, mm. but um, I, I don't have in front of me. Some of them to to help different stores, even the smaller location, even if you have like eight people, but kind of run every three months bigger support tournaments that company sends them exclusive regional promos. Mm. And in order for you to get those promos, you have to attend the big competitive regional tournament. Okay. Almost kind of like, you know, RG states. Yeah, I I thought but that was. But it will be, but will be accessible to more different regions and that even they like, also even like simple things like uh, what they did with ARG where they had that gold stamp on it. Like that's kind of what Pokemon does, where it's just like a normal card, but it's got a gold stamp for regional and uh, state and all that stuff. So you can be like, hey, this as a token of like instead of just a normal promo, you can be like, this is the event I went to. Uh, it, having stuff that's unique to regions, I think, would be really awesome, and, and uh, uh, it, it's also great for for collectors as well who like that sort of exclusivity. <laughs> and it will also help some stores because, like, mm -hmm. we we run our cash tournaments on a regular basis, and that will helps our community to stay strong and stay healthy and continue to grow. But lots of areas they don't do any competitive tournaments, and that's when the complaints comes that you know, a scene just doesn't stop existing hmm. because there is not something there for them to look forward. There is like no tournaments, no, no, no structure. And at least if you have something like that every three months and store can run with something special, they almost feel like kind of obligated, not obligated, it's an option for them. And they want to schedule every three months. And it's a good time for people to prepare, you know, get ready. It's like when you have pre-releases type of a deal. And that way you also have a bigger competitive tournament that you play in for cooler prizes that will be harder to obtain. Yeah, and especially if it's a consistent schedule, so it's not a, something that's a surprise or, or something that requires a lot of effort to think about or, or set up. It's something everyone's aware of and is easy to advertise and stuff like that. Um, oh, that was just an idea. So, yeah, no, that's it. I, like uh, that I, I hope they will take it because I think it will be simple, no much cost, but it helps the competitive scene. And uh, did uh, it, so? Did he mention any or uh, in your talk? You said he was really good at uh, you know communicating back with you and everything like that. Um, are did he give an indication that they are aware of like different things in the community, like they're monitoring uh, people, even if they're not responding or, you know, uh, communicating back, they're still aware of like some of the things that people are saying, like that feels like that could, they might be at least mildly aware if they, they are going forward with a potentially uh, GPs, company run GPs next uh, year. So did he give an indication that they're, they're listening to the community? I mean, he, he said that you do look obviously at the US page. Okay. He also asked me if it's something needed to help him post on US page and obviously I told him like anything that needs to be done in the US, in the United States, I'm volunteering to help any way possible. Um, 
But like, what kind of issues do? Well, I I was just thinking of like. Uh, people obviously were upset about the GPs being canceled. And so seeing that they were coming out with GPs, that felt like it could have been something they were planning from the beginning, but it also could be a reaction to maybe the community's sort of not very positive reaction to some of the stuff with the competitive side, which I think is good because, you know, could just be some, a lot of that could be just the effect of a rocky transition, you know, go, you switch leadership as stuff happens, but um, stuff like that. And there's, there are worries of, uh, you know, uh, like say uh, with uh, Jeff gone of, of uh, losing that sort of direct line that um, uh, mm -hmm. the U.S. or non-Japanese speakers had to the company. And so, uh, you know, like, hey, in the U.S., this this card is super, you know, oppressive and all that stuff. And so Jeff was sort of that line of like, hey, you might not see this in Japan, but in the U.S., this card's going bananas um and so it, it it's good to know if like like you said if he's monitoring the u.s page that even that's just uh, enough to get a pretty good pulse on the community and all that and what they might be uh their overall feelings of the game and everything well from what i understand also from our conversation i mean they are very interested in the scene you know they mm. obviously wanted to grow and you know, whatever concerns people have, they would like, you know, they would want to address them. Yeah. I mean, I know they're not very big of making statements. And that was the beautiful thing we had with Jeff because he was very open, very fast, and, you know, he will make the statements. They are not big on making statements. <laughs> but they do work on the issues. They do working on solving them. and did not ignoring them. So it, it seems like that they're still trying to continue, you know, have the healthy matter as it is right now, you know, a healthy, grown community. And I mean, I did message him too. One of my proposals, the big thing, first whole big paragraph, <laughs> yeah. how they need to make a statement, just like, just a simple statement of what's going on, you know, there is, it's just a simple transition. Yeah. And then they, they need to get the anchors back in and figure it out who's in charge for what. And, uh, maybe they will get somebody who will make statements. Maybe they will. Maybe they will get Jeff back. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that, that that would be kind of nice. <laughs> oh, that would be awesome. Um, so, like, uh, I'm not sure what your thoughts were before, but it, um, what are your thoughts uh, currently, especially after talking with uh, Kim on on the game now going forward? Uh, is it essentially the same as you felt before? I I don't I don't know if you're how you were before you talked to Kim, but. Uh, how do you feel about the force will now sort of going forward after after that discussion? When things were changing, obviously I was worried. Mm. You know, everybody was scared and worried. And I mean, you know, seeing people panicking and, you know, selling collections, quitting the game and all sorts of things. After talking to him, like, I know they're planning to continue print the sets. You know, they, they still want to expand they want to grow the game, they want to promote the game and advertise the game. So, you know, they're not just ignoring like even competitive scene, even though it doesn't make them money, but they still know it's important for them to have. So it, it shows a good effort that they're not just like, OK, what makes us money? We're just going to do that, you know, just bluntly print the sets and ignore everything else. They're not planning to do that. OK, so it, it's it's a very good indication. Like I'm not worried about the game. We still plan to continue to buy as much for Seville as we can, run as many big competitive tournaments as we can. Like I said, also to us, we're still gonna have two Grand Prix next year, so which is awesome. <laughs> Obviously, cash support. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that because I, I, I had um, initially I'd heard that uh, Kim was at Gamma, which. Uh, I, I was I was happy to hear because just that they were out there, and so and then yeah after hearing that discussion with you it definitely helped me be a little bit more uh, optimistic now going forward as, and now I did as especially with the uh, knowledge of the Grand Prix because it shows because yeah we did get the you know product line going through next year which was nice but it's still just you know it, it's just a list of dates so hearing that they're also planning on doing GPS which like you said isn't just like they spend money on GPs and then they get all that money back and then some. It's a that's a straight up just 
putting it to help grow the community and it's a gps and tournaments are more of a, a slow burn to help build that steady base so if they're doing that 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 helps a lot with the confidence that not only we have in the game but it helps show that they have confidence potentially in the game going forward uh so that was all really uh, such really nice to hear <laughs> And he's also very concerned of other store beings and other people's well-being too, and mm-hmm. financial being. Like I offer him when he says I'm gonna run company run Grand Prix, I'm like, well, I can help you. I can run some Grand Prix for you. He's like, well, that's you know, that's too much money. If you have to rent the venue, you know, you can't get it back. So he was, you know, he wasn't just like, oh yeah, sure, you know, here, take it. You want expense, great. You know, I don't have to do anything. He didn't do, you know, he did show concern and he wants stores that supports him to also benefit from his, from his product, from, from the company, from the game. Okay. Um, so, uh, probably, at, yeah, we're at 30 minutes. So <laughs> any last, uh, anything, last thoughts you have that you sort of want to leave everyone with? Keep playing, <laughs> you know, we were still good. We're still growing, you know. Yeah, things are okay, we don't hear anything, but they're still not ignoring the game. They're still making it, they're still concerned for it. So, And we just have to look at the present time. I know people also worry, what if, what's that? We have to look, what is right now, what's in the present? You know, the, is, even though if there is no communication, it's still not ruining anything. Meta right now is great. We still have tournaments, you know, there is still three more Grand Prix. There's Minneapolis, there's New York, there is Arizona. There's still those Grand Prix. After that, we will see how the company setting up with promos. Probably we'll have October, another Minneapolis Grand Prix. We still have Worlds. So as of right now, things are good. It's still stable. Now they just worked it out. Companies gain their softwares, uh, stores gain softwares, they gain their promos. So we are getting the support, like nothing right now. There is no broken cards. There is no issues. There is 10, 10 deck meta, create your own, you know, break the meta. Yeah. So we, we are good right now. There is no reason to panic. There is no reason to throw it all. Yeah. And it's not like. Uh, for the most, with the exception of the starter decks, it's not like <laughs> other card games where you, you're you're dumping all this money into it. You know, if if someone showed me how, you know, I I'm really big into board games and and deck builders and stuff like that. So the amount of money I spend on Force of Will, I feel like I, it's even if I, I'm not wasting money on it. It, it in the worst case scenario, if something ever happened to Force of Will, I still have all these cards that can be used for thousands of games for the next you know however many years so it's because of how inexpensive the game is it's i don't see any reason not to continue supporting it as long as uh, the company is supporting it which is what we're seeing right now um we also gain a good secondary market out of booster box oh like the if you look in the ev of the booster boxes you you like of the full value you always open in, even if you buy boxes at $100, you open in minimum of $140 to $180 worth. Yeah, I was, I was just taking a look at TCG Player actually today, and I, I don't know how accurate this is, but I was looking at New Dawn Rises, and I was seeing that uh, there were, the booster packs for that are above MSRP that they're selling for, and it, which I haven't seen in a long time in Force of Will. And the, with the exception of the Secret Rares, the third most expensive card in the set is a Ford Uncommon. Not even a rare or super rare. Uh, yeah. so I was like, this is, uh, uh, that's $12 for the floor. And, and the regular non full arts are still in a decent price range. Nothing's crazy, but uh, full arts are, you know, what I look at, <laughs> what I'd get. So it is nice seeing that, unlike other sets, uh, I feel like Valhalla has been really good with maintaining that quality, which is something that Force has been up and down with as far as Booster Box is maintaining value. And so far, Valhalla actually has. every set every set from ancient nights to present i i just did that recently somebody asked me to do um price book collection like mm. to buy like place out of everything so for you to have a place out of everything you need to open three to four booster boxes so if you buy a box from your store most of them a hundred dollars a box so you're spending three to four hundred dollars 
starting Ancient Nights to New Valhalla's, except time spinning which. Um, do we have a sound? Oh yeah, okay. yeah. Sorry. Has... sorry. Um, to accept this time span, which the over non full arts place out of everything, you need to spend over four hundred dollars to get it. Mm. Like every single set, not including full arts. So when you open in booster boxes, you gain all the free full arts. So you double in your money. Time span, which you spend in on place out of everything, non full arts, you're spending over six hundred dollars. I I noticed that our local store had randomly gotten the second print run of Time Spain Witch, so I, I bought that, uh, what was it, like a month or so, a month and a half ago, and uh, yeah, I realized that about quarter way or halfway through the box, I already made my money back <laughs> for it. Yeah, it's insane, I mean, you, you and you guarantee all the good cards, the chased ones, you guarantee it in the box. Yeah. So, like, that that's a beautiful thing, like, it, it's not like Magic or Pokemon, you want to open a rare and you have to open six cases to maybe find that one rare or that one mythic and still might not get it. In Forcible, you open one box and every desirable card, you gain one or two versions of it. Yeah. Yeah, now that's I, that's one thing I've always liked with Forcible and hope, hope well, I assume they'll, they'll continue that with the next cluster. Um, and, but yeah, and... Um, and like we mentioned at the beginning, you have the Minneapolis GP coming up. So if you guys have it, there's still time. You could still, uh, there's still some plane tickets that are pretty cheap. I, I just looked at, um, and, uh, the, like she said, she, you have three different tiers to choose from. You can, if you want to just go there and do the normal entry, but if you want the nice exclusive stuff, uh, you have that, uh, you have the extra you can put in. I'll. I'll be there. I won't be playing. I'll be I'll be uh, uh, streaming with Jeremy. So that that'll be fun to hopefully say say, say hi to some people. Yeah, <laughs> see we'll see how well that. that goes. Yeah. But uh, thanks a lot for coming on. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. All right. See you later. See you in Minneapolis. Yeah. <laughs>